Good afternoon and welcome to Worship with Crescentville United Methodist and Frankfurt Memorial United Methodist Churches. We're in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it's good to have you online with us today. So welcome. This is the first Sunday in Advent. Uh, we are going to be doing Advent uh, Sundays for the next, uh, well, starting today for the four Sundays of Advent. So uh, we're glad that you're part of us and hope you will stick with us. Uh, Advent uh, uh, will we'll be uh, sponsoring a special Bible study meeting. I shouldn't say Advent sponsoring it, but the church is sponsoring it. It will be an Advent study. So we hope that you'll join us. It'll be this Wednesday at seven o'clock. Check your bulletins for the link to get on there. Um, I would like to welcome Pastor Randy to our worship today, and he will be with us through Advent. So uh, <laughs> he'll be working his way back in. And uh, so it's good to have Randy with us today. We also have some birthdays to uh, remember and recognize. First of all, uh, Larry Prince and, and Rich Snyder are both on the third. So happy birthday, happy birthday to you. And on the fourth, Fred Frank's birthday. And Fred is going to be 96, 96, count them, years old. Uh, <laughs> Fred, happy birthday to you. Uh, today, the Kane family from Frankfurt Memorial will be leading our Advent candle liturgy. And um, we ask that uh, you send pictures of your Advent candles to your church email or text them to Sue or Pat because we would like to show those pictures as Advent goes along. Next week, December 6th, we'll have a love feast. We've done this before. So if you've been part of that, remember to please bring something bread or breadish and something to drink uh, for the Zoom worship part of that. So there we are. Uh, welcome to everyone. It's so good to have you with us this morning. Now. Will you join us in our chorus of welcome, the family of God? Good afternoon. It's nice to be here with you. It's good to see your faces and hear your voices. It's good to it's good to feel good enough to to be together. And I'm I'm very very glad to be able to share these services of Advent as we prepare for such a celebration of as Christmas is. I invite you now to join me with the call to worship, which comes to us today from Isaiah the 64th chapter. This is the season of holy waiting. We wait for the one who will tear open the heavens and come down to save us. We watch for the day when God's name will be made known among the nations. We wait in the shadows for the light of the world to appear. Come, let us walk in the light of God. Let us continue in our worship as we sing together our opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
Now it's time for the lighting of our Advent candles. And today we have the Kane family who's going to be doing this. Uh, this is the fourth generation, I understand, of Kane's doing the Advent candle lighting wreath. So today we'd like to recognize Genevieve, uh, Stephen, uh, Logan, Braden, and Megan. And they're all part of this and part of the family of God. So I'm going to let them take it from here in lighting our Advent candle. Dear you, Lord, our Father, we are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way. With all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirmed the testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gifts as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus is coming and we are preparing to welcome him again into the world and into our lives. We light the Advent candles to celebrate the gifts we are given and to name the gifts we can offer to others. The prophet Isaiah declares that we are like clay and God is the potter. We are the work of God's hands and we have the potential to do, to be greatly transformed. Paul reminds us that in Jesus, we have been blessed in every way and likewise can be a blessing to others. These are both statements of great hope. We light the first Advent candle of hope. This small flickering light of hope can do great things. Hold it high to light a path or add it to others to brighten our whole room. The flame of hope is an Advent gift given to us that can dispel fear, lift despair, and offer a promise of better times. Please join in singing the light of the world. The light of the world is Jesus. Celebrate the hope we have received in Jesus. 
Likewise, we recognize that we ourselves are a gift of hope to many in this community and the many more around the world. There's no greater light than the light of his righteousness with which we must light up everyone in our world. Let the gospel fire burn in us and through us, let us be the light and hope of the world. Let us pray. Loving God, as we remember and anticipate the arrival of Jesus in the world, we rejoice in the gift of hope. Help us today and every day to be grateful, to hear your word and to do your will by sharing hope with others. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, born in Bethlehem, amen. Please join in singing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Now it's time for our children's message, and Sue Snyder will be bringing that this morning. Sue? Hi, good afternoon. Um, today is the beginning of a very special time of year, Advent. And all of us have a favorite part when it comes to preparing for Christmas. I'm sure that everyone has some kind of a star. Um, either on the top of your tree or on maybe the top of your manger. Somewhere we have a star. And I have to tell you, we have a neighbor who puts a star in his tree. Now, mind you, this star is about 40 feet high. And we always wonder how he gets it up there. And sometimes, you know, we'll come home and there it will be. You can see it. I mean, you can really see it for quite a distance. So this year, a tree company was trimming the tree across the street and he got them to help put the star up. So I really wanted to see him get that star up on his own. But anyway, there it is and it's lit all the time. You know, the wise men followed the star. They had known about it, studied it, and they were ready to follow that star. This is a season where the star means a lot and it's very important. And, you know, we think about Jesus's birth and we also think about his coming again. And this is a season of hope. And I think this year, especially, we all need hope. And so let's all follow a star, follow the special star, and we should all have hope this year. Thanks. Thank you, Miss Sue. You, you took me back to childhood. We had a, we didn't put a star, but we put lights up in a very tall evergreen tree in our front yard and my older brothers always got to go up to, to hang those lights. I never got a chance because I have three older brothers and uh, I guess my time ran out or something, but uh, appreciate that, that message and that reminder how we all need hope. And the star certainly reminds us that the one who put those stars in the sky <laughs> is the one that we can trust. Thank you, Miss Sue. And let us all keep that in mind. As we have come together in our worship, we come together to, to give thanks. We've just come through the season, <clears throat> excuse me, through the day of Thanksgiving, in which I'm sure many of us had, had much to be thankful for as we 
gathered around our tables, we certainly were probably a little saddened because some of our gatherings weren't what we're accustomed to on Thanksgiving. But nonetheless, we were able to have time to be thankful, time to share and to be reminded of God's faithfulness as we shared a day of Thanksgiving just a few days ago. We also come together to pray for each other. And as we do so, we want to remind each other of some some requests that have come to our attention in recent days. And they are uh, that Alan Call from from Frankfurt Memorial, uh, who is also a resident over at the Protestant home, he has recently been tested. He has recently tested positive for COVID-19. So we need to be in prayer for Alan, for the staff of PPH. Um, and if I can even ask that we continue to pray for Sandy Heiser, who provides a lot of the care for Alan as well. Let us be in prayer for all of them. A prayer also for someone who tested positive for the for the virus recently is Braden Budman uh, from, excuse me, from, from Carol Evans' family. We need to be in prayer for Braden. We need to be in prayer for his family. Let's pray for Carol as well in this time. And I would simply like to add a, a word of, of thanks to God for your continued prayers for me. As I mentioned earlier, it's it's nice to feel well enough to, to be out and about a little bit. And I'm not out and about other than to take some walks in the neighborhood and go to the doctor, but just be up and about, I guess, maybe is a better way to put it. And I'm just grateful. Uh, I was reminded recently of, of your prayers and I'm just so thankful to know of those prayers that you have been so faithful to pray on my behalf. So let us continue together as we join in prayer. Our good and gracious God, we are thankful, not just because our national day of Thanksgiving was a few days ago, but we are thankful because you have taught us and you have shown us goodness of being thankful. You have told us in your word that it is a good thing that we give thanks to you, because in doing so, we acknowledge that you are the one from whom we have all things. We are grateful that you have caused us to to be reminded of that. You have caused us to be aware of you in our lives. You You have shown us You are the one in whom we can trust and know that you will be faithful as we place our trust in you. And so, oh God, in these days, just following the day of Thanksgiving, we continue to give you thanks and we continue to be reminded of your goodness as we do so. And as we give you thanks because we know you are faithful, we call on you in behalf of those for whom we pray, those from our congregation, those who our congregation brings to us in prayer. Oh God, we lift all the needs of everyone before you today, trusting in your goodness, trusting in your strength, trusting in your provisions as you continue to be faithful to those of us who trust in you. Oh God, for all of those persons, for all of those circumstances, we pray that you would be known and seen and heard and realized, especially in the peace that you give. The peace that your word tells us is beyond any peace that we can know or imagine. The peace that you give is something that simply causes us to be at rest in our souls because we know that it is well with our soul as we place our trust in you. We thank you, O God, for your goodness, for all the ways that you have shown yourself to us. And in the beginnings of this new season, this season of Advent in which we prepare to celebrate anew the coming of your son to the world, 
we ask your blessing upon us. And we thank you for our hope, the hope that is ours as we continue to place our trust in you, the hope that is ours to realize that you will provide as we continue to trust you. We pray for our nation. We pray for our world. And we pray that we indeed would all be light as we live our lives before others. May we hold that star high. May we shine the light of your love brightly so others would see your love in the light of our lives and would follow us as we walk toward you. Bless us, we pray, through these days of Advent. Hopeful, grateful, and looking forward to your coming again. Bless us in all of this, we pray, as we ask these things in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Savior, even as we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts and our trespasses as we forgive our debtors and those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we have been and are a thankful people, we show that thanks in the ways that we give of, of what God has given to us and of what we know God has given to us. And so we continue to, to remind you to bring your offerings to the churches through online ways, whatever ways you can, we are grateful that you're able to be you're able to be faithful in your giving. And as we just again came through this this day of Thanksgiving, may we be may we be reminded all the more to give unto God as God has given to us. Let us continue to give with thankful hearts. Amen. And now let us continue in song by singing together, People Look East. People look east, the time is near. Oh, 
and watch. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 37. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see those things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It is like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Welcome to Advent. Today is the first of four Sundays before Christmas, which is considered among most Christians as the season of Advent. It ends on Christmas Eve. The word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, meaning coming or visit. And Advent is the beginning of our liturgical church year. During Advent, we prepare for and anticipate the coming of Christ. We remember the longing of Jews for a Messiah and our own longing and need for forgiveness, salvation, and a new beginning. So now, even as we look back and celebrate the birth of Jesus in a humble stable in Bethlehem, we also look forward, anticipating the second coming of Christ as the fulfillment of all that was promised by his first coming. Our scripture this morning is part of a conversation between Jesus and a few of his disciples. As they were leaving the temple on their way to cross the Kidron Valley, his followers looked back at the temple and exclaimed, wow, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Jesus told them that it would all be destroyed. So when they reached the Mount of Olives and had some private time, the men had questions. When will this happen? And what will be the sign? How will we know? Will this be the end? Jesus told them that there would be other people saying that they were the Christ. They would lie and deceive and tell people to follow them. There would be wars and rumors of wars, natural and personal disasters, and charlatans would point to them as signs of the end time. However, they are not being truthful. These things will always be with us. It is not the end. 
Only God, the Father, knows when the end will be. Not the angels in heaven, not even God's Son, Jesus Christ. But when the end comes, we must be prepared. Be ready. So be on watch. Incidentally, those massive stones were tumbled and crumbled. The magnificent buildings reduced to ashes in AD 70, when the Roman military totally destroyed Jerusalem. Many of Jesus' disciples lived to see it, but he told them that won't be the end. The end is still coming and things will be very dark, except for the Son of Man coming on the clouds of glory. So wait and be ready, be alert, be watchful. Jesus reminded his followers of what they needed to be doing and why. His emphasis is not on his lack of knowledge. Jesus was acknowledging his humanity and he gave up his unlimited use of divine attributes when he became a man. He pointed out that it will be revealed in God's time when God wills. No one can predict by scripture or science the exact day of Jesus' return. He was teaching them and us that preparation, not calculation, is needed. He encouraged them to grow in unity and maturity expressed and shown in love for each other. We refer to that as Christian love. Have we reached that level of unity and maturity yet? I'll let you answer that for yourselves, but it's important that we remain aware. Coming here to your churches, pretty much as an outsider, the indicators I see are positive. It is a blessing to be with you, and I'm thankful. Three days ago was Thanksgiving. I spent some time with my wife and children. My children are grown up now, and they have grandchildren. Unfortunately, we couldn't have the whole extended family together because of the COVID-19 restrictions. But we did get to face talk with our grandchildren and great grandchildren via Zoom. If I said that like I know what I'm talking about, don't be fooled. My daughters or sons in law just make it happen on their cell phones, and Barbara and I get to participate. The weather was beautiful, warm for this time of year. So the guys put our patio table in the middle of the yard. Then we took food from our Thanksgiving table. In our family, everybody contributes, and we ate outside, socially distanced. After I said grace, my daughter Katie said it was longer than normal, I sat back and thought of how blessed I am and all I have to be thankful for, including time with you. What am I thankful for with you? Well, I'm thankful that Pastor Randy invited me to be part of his church family. But I'm especially thankful for the way you welcomed Barbara and me into your midst. So thank you for having me be a part of you for a while. We are blessed to have a dedicated leader and pastor like Pastor Randy. But we need to remember that Worship is far more than just hearing the preaching. So many of you have been an active part of the worship program and your service is appreciated. Thank you for contributing to our worship experience. Of course, there's more to a church than worship, a lot more. I felt privileged to be invited to be part of some groups such as staff parish relations and church council as well as weekly Bible study. Incidentally, the Bible study for Advent starts this Wednesday at seven o'clock p.m. on Zoom. 
check your newsletter for the link as I will do mine. You are light to your communities, a beacon shining for everyone to see. You have outstanding leaders here and very good workers. Your, your churches are in good hands. As I look around at so many things, I see people, church people, volunteering, actively working to make things work in the midst of a pandemic and all kinds of problems going on around us. Unity, caring, maturing, getting to know each other, supporting each other, being open and honest with each other, pointing out problems or concerns, but doing it with kindness. That's Christian love. Yours is a welcoming church. And before the restrictions took place, the welcome was on your faces as you introduced yourselves to strangers, invited them to your groups, offered to show them around. There's a lot going on here. And when things open up again, most people can find something to be part of in addition to Sunday worship. However, we need to be careful that we don't let our greetings and our prayers become rote, things we do or say without thinking. Remember when we can move amongst each other again, sharing the peace of Christ, we need to look that person in the eye and really mean it. When we say the Lord's Prayer, we need to be sure it's important to us. As I thought about that, I realized how much I do things by rote and sometimes don't really even pay attention to what I'm doing. When I get in my car, for example, I usually start the engine, then count to three. One, buckle seatbelt. Two, turn on lights. Three, shift into gear. However, sometimes I check my GPS or adjust the mirrors. It messes up my count and I forget to buckle my seatbelt or something. But once I start moving, warning bells go off so I can make the correction. But when in my prayers, I say the Lord's Prayer or the Apostles' Creed or the 23rd Psalm from memory by rote, my mind sometimes wanders right in the middle of it. I lose my place and forget where I was. And there are no warning signals. I just have to start over again. And occasionally, again, again. Then I wake up to the fact that I'm not paying attention, even to myself not even in conversation with God. I'm not alert. I'm not watching. I need to refocus my mind, put my focus back on God instead of whatever it was that got me off track. Does that ever happen to you? Together, we can watch, encourage each other to be alert, be ready be active in our church, and show and share the love of Jesus Christ. We need to be prepared because the end is coming. We don't know the day or the hour. As Jesus said, only God the Father knows that. And if he comes suddenly, don't let him find you sleeping unprepared. So, we prepare for the birth of Jesus, recognition that he came like one of us, a baby born of a mother, but in very humble circumstances. She watched over him until he watched over her for all time. And he also watches over you and me. Let's remember that he's coming again. When? In God's time. But for us, 
It's time to get ready. Time to be ready. It's time. And what Jesus says to us, he says to everyone, watch. Amen. Will you join me now in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now will you join me in our next hymn, I Know Whom I Have Believed. God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the, the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with us and abide with us this day and forever. And we ask this in Jesus' name, the one who told us to go in peace, but watch. Amen. The light.